It's Platt, and today we head to Lithuania. That's next on Platt's Beer of the Week. So the particular beer we have today, I uh, apologize for a butcher's name, Svitori's Extra Drop. Uh, they say on the bottom, Light Dortmunder, but uh, Svitori's is what we have here. Uh, this is the type of beer that kind of makes me excited to do this beer series. Uh, this is kind of what I'm looking for when I go to the beer store. I want to find something I've never heard of, don't know what it is, and give her a try. Expand my horizons. Um, great thing I like about what's going on in some liquor stores now is that their beer section, you buy singles. Um, to be honest, why would I have bought a six pack of something I can't even pronounce, let alone know what's in it? Probably don't want to buy a whole six pack, but the fact that I can buy a single, hey, what the heck, let's try something new. And uh, when I see these, some of these foreign brands I've just never heard of before, I really love it because now I get to research and find out something new. And Satori's, uh, just as a prime example of that, a uh, little on the background of Satori's, uh, the brewery would, uh, translates or the word translates to lighthouse in English. And once you get a little background of, of uh, background story of the brewery, you understand why it uh, comes into play. Uh, the company itself was founded in 1784 uh, and is Lithuania's second oldest brewery. So if you're one of the two oldest breweries in any country in Europe, that's a pretty impressive deal. And what we're talking about now, almost 240 years, that's a, that's a pretty good run. Uh, the brewery itself was founded by a gentleman named J.W. Renke. Renke uh, came from a German family that was merchant seamen. They, they were just merchants or whatever, and I guess they were expanding the family business out, and J.W. decided to head to Lithuania. The, uh, on top of the company logo is the Sea Eagle, and that Sea Eagle actually came from the family coat of arms, which is a bigger deal in Europe than here in the U.S., but... That eagle's on their coat of arms. Let's got uh, put on the corporate logo. Um, and again, Sea Eagle, Lighthouse, Families, Merchant Siemens, it all kind of comes together. Um, when Rinke started the brewery in Lithuania, even though it was a Lithuanian company, he brought those classic German styles that he grew up with to Lithuania. In a roundabout sense, he kind of helped kind of export those styles. Um, even though merchants had been selling wine and spirits across, you know, across most of Europe and most of the planet, that by the late 1700s, you know, spirits were getting exported everywhere. But still, the fact that someone basically opened a German brewery in Lithuania, again, exporting uh, those classic German styles. Um, the name Svatori actually did not come to the brewery till after World War II. I want to say it was around 1944. The brewery was mainly destroyed during a bombing run. Um, so much to the point they just decided to scrap it and rebuild it. And they reopened in 1946, not just with a new brewery, but with a new name. Uh, today, the company is owned by Carlsberg Group. Carlsberg is one of those giant corporate conglomerates that have a ton of brands. Uh, similar to your AB InBev, Modelo Group, uh, Molson Coors, or just you know a few examples. Um, actually, Carlsberg Group owns this through one of their subsidiaries, uh, Baltic Beverage Holding. But I was on their website and I was just stuck. I knew Carlsberg was big, but I didn't know they're that big. They claim to have over 600 different brands under their portfolio, and it's it's mind-boggling. A lot more kind of regional European regional breweries that you know have their whole line pilsner lager you know what have you but it's still to have that <laughs> many beers under one company is quite impressive um Spatoris is uh, exported to uh, roughly 20 plus countries mainly in europe outside of europe the big ones like canada u.s and australia uh, but this is uh, like I said, uh, more of a european Brewery here in the states. I'm not sure how many different uh, states they're distributed to. Uh, one great thing about living in Vegas is a lot of times we get some <laughs> some of the more unusual things that you wouldn't necessarily find in uh, Sheboygan or what have you. Nothing gets Sheboygan. 
Uh, real quick, talk about some of their other types of beers. You can definitely see the German influence there. Uh, they have one called Baltus. That is their take on a Hefeweizen. Uh, they have another one called Baltijo. Uh, Baltijos. Uh, hopefully I'm saying that right. It looks like it should be Spanish, but it's actually not Spanish. But uh, that is their Marsden style beer. And from what I gather, probably the most popular style. Uh, there's Chinternis. Chinternis. Again, I apologize uh, if I'm uh, bastardizing these words. That's their Pilsner style beer. They have a classic European lager, the name after the founder, J.W. Rinke. And then last but not least, they have one called Tradicinus. Tradicin uh, again, I'm probably butchering that. And that is their take on the classic German Maybach. So, again, um, you know, quite known in Lithuanian brewing lore, but they are a German, they're German style brewer. Well, before we try this beer, though, let's check out the stats. All right, so as I said earlier, this particular beer is a Dortmunder. Dortmunder is a style not too many people know. Um, actually, it's kind of an in-between style. You know, depending on which beer experts you talk to, they may say, well, this really should be categorized as this or should be categorized as that. But the beer experts have uh, decided that Dortmunder is just unique enough on its own to have its own category. Uh, ABV-wise, we're looking between 5 and 6% alcohol by volume. Um, Talking classic German styles, 6% up, now we're getting into the box. Uh, below 5%, you're just kind of in some kind of light lager range. So we're low in between there. IBUs, we're looking at 23 to 29. A little more hop presence, uh, a little more IBUs than we'd see in a classic kind of light European style lager. Um, but these aren't, these aren't hop bombs compared to pale ales, IPAs, what have you. Um, these beers tend to be malt forward, more like a classic Hellas style beer, but they have more of a hop base, kind of like Pilsner. You know, Pilsners have a little hop bite crispness to them, uh, and this beer's a little bit of both. Again, it's kind of an in-between category, per se. Um, this beer's a balanced beer. You know, again, some of the classic German style lagers tend to be just more malt. Uh, this one has a medium hop uh, base to it. Um, the malty notes tend to be the light toasty flavors. We're not getting the darker notes, the chocolates, stuff like that. And the hops tend to be the classic noble style hops, which means they're a little more floral, not the citrusy piney uh, hops we have here in the U.S. So that's just a take on Dortmunder. Enough talking about Dortmunder. Let's try a Dortmunder. Oh. All right, so uh, real quick, this is a half liter bottle, so it's a little larger average American size beer. We got a nice one plus finger thickness. Color wise, this is a dark golden uh, beer, plenty of effervescence. Let's give her a nose. All right, very classic European malt funk uh, to it. Um, yeah, it reminds you just a lot of those, actually smells like a lot of those green bottle European style beers. Has almost a little of that skunk to it, even though it's in a brown bottle, you shouldn't have that skunk. You do get a little bit of that on the nose, so let's give her a taste. Oh, that's nice, that's real nice. Um, definitely, again, malt forward, uh, I've used that term. A little more viscosity mouth-wise, um, and that's where that kind of malt presence comes in. You kind of get it on the mouthfeel. Um, but again, it's balanced, it's crisp, it's not viscous. There's more viscosity, but it's not viscous, it's not thick. Um, yeah, there's... There's also a hint of the darker malts. Um, you know, again, if you're comparing to contrasting, and I'm just going to go kind of extreme between like a, a box style beers or doppelbacher, you can definitely taste those darker notes and darker malts and stuff like that. And you're 
like European lager. And this is kind of Vienna lagerish, um, even though Vienna lagers tend to be slightly darker than this. This is in that kind of vein. Um, I'll say more hop balance, more hop bitterness to provide a little more balance. Uh, Vienna lagers tend to be maltier. But if you're a Vienna lager guy, this is this is somewhere in between. You could you you, you could definitely work with that. Uh, nice easy drinker. Um, I could definitely see myself outside on a patio somewhere in Europe. You know, on a nice um, Indian summer day, knocking a few of these back. Uh, more importantly, I can see where this is a very agreeable, very market friendly lager. Uh, just easy going down. Um, nothing spectacular though. I, it's not something I would necessarily go out of the way, but I'm glad there was a single there for me to try. So, Well, with that being said, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you like me to try, you can always leave them in the comment section or contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.